You're watching Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Bill Butel and John Johnson. Corey McFerrin has sports, storm field with weather, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. The emergency medical service in New York City is there to offer quick help. But sometimes there is slow response at best and lives are lost at worst. All this week, Jim Dolan's been investigating the emergency at EMS. Tonight, he takes a look at what you can do to make the system work for you. Jim? Uh, Bill, in just a moment, we're going to show you how to get the best possible results should you need prompt medical attention, including a list of phone numbers you'll need besides 911. First, though, this. The city will begin a pilot program on Monday of next week using some firefighters with special medical training to respond to medical emergencies. It's a small step in the right direction, but one designed to lessen the emergency at EMS. Deep breath through your mouth. Through your mouth. Good. Open her mouth and breathe in once every five seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, and breathe. You understand that? Sir, do you shoot up? You do shoot up? What do you take? You take heroin or coke? We got these bars last year for working 19, the summer of 1987. I'm not sure what they're going to give us this year for working the summer of 1988. The answer is not much. After the blistering summer of 88, nothing has been done to reduce the number of calls that are not emergencies but require EMS response. The new southern ambulances continue to break down at an alarming rate despite their enormous cost, and supplies including medicine continue to be missing from EMS headquarters when they're needed by paramedics. The new management team has promised changes, but little has been done, and response time continues to suffer as a result. So does supply availability. We're talking about anything from the software, the, the software supplies such as the, the, the triangulars, the bandages, very simple basic equipment that every ambulance according to uh, uh, state laws has to have. An example, when a medic finishes a run, guidelines state that he must wash down anything that was touched by blood with a mixture of bleach and water. This prevents the spread of disease. That's one guideline, sensible as it sounds, that's hard to follow. It's to be used to wash down anything that's been exposed to blood. And I went two months without seeing any bleach in my uh, ambulance station. Supplies controlled by the EMS quartermaster was one of the first and most prominent problems noticed by the new EMS chief, Thomas Doyle. I did go down to per, uh, quartermaster then, and, and I looked around, and uh, I immediately saw things that I thought should be changed. Uh, I'm, I tend to be a little bit on the orderly side, and I, I just uh, thought that things should be uh, kept in a little bit better order than they are. In fact, Doyle has set up new guidelines that make management responsible for supplies, but medics continue to complain about station houses running short. We've shown you examples of how slow EMS can cost a life rather than save a life. Here's what you should know for your own safety. Have by your phone the numbers of the nearest hospital emergency room and the nearest trauma care center. And if you don't have access to a car, the number of a private car service. If there's a private ambulance service that serves your area, know that number too. Should you face a medical emergency, first determine if the patient can be brought into a hospital by private car. If it's not serious, don't call 911. It slows them down, and it slows the time until your patient gets medical treatment. And it costs more money. EMS will charge you $165 at least for hospital transportation. If it is serious, call 911. Answer their questions clearly, concisely, and honestly. If an ambulance hasn't arrived in several minutes, call back. The operator will tell you if an ambulance has been dispatched. If it has, wait. If not, you may want to call your nearest emergency room or private ambulance service and ask for advice. This last is important. Remember Ruth Weeder? She did everything she could to get EMS to come to the aid of her husband who was having a heart attack. But her husband died in an ambulance that took an hour and three minutes to reach her front door. And Mrs. Weeder lives within blocks of three hospitals. And now an update. Since we've been working on this series, we've continued to monitor EMS and changes there designed for improvements. And in recent days, there has been some progress in the availability of supplies for medics and EMTs. There are just under 2,000 medics and EMTs who work for the city's emergency medical service. Each night, this highly dedicated group of people endures harassment, threats, and real violence, all in the course of their efforts to save lives. They may well be the most dedicated, hardest working public servants this city has. What we've shown, though, is that they too often are strapped in their efforts by a system poorly managed.
and one that was largely ignored until this summer's crisis, which cost lives. And only now are some improvements being made. Finally, I just want to thank David Chan, who uh, edited the videotape for this series. Bill? Thank Good you series. very much.